best out. Like the heavens, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Land of harlots and wicked reverence. Probably going all ways like an intersection. You get the message. The daughter of Babylon will fall. He gon' stir up in these world war Christians. You ain't getting saved by no rapture. You gon' be in a concentration camp with your pastor. Telling you the chip is good, if not the mark of the beast. We in Babylon like Daniel, we pray to the east. All past the road. Shalom, and first and foremost, I want to say all praises to Ahaya by Hashem Yasha. And this lesson is called Job the Uzite. I want to say blessings to those out there doing the work in sincerity and spirit and truth and enduring until the end time come. All right, and uh, hopefully I can give some understanding and edification on this subject. Okay, so the first part of this is the chronological order. All right, I want to address the chronological order because just because Job, uh, the book of Job is set up uh, between Esther and uh, the book of Psalms doesn't mean that's the time that Job lived in. All right. So we have to get the chronological order. We have to see um, the actual time in which Job lived. All right. Because some say he was before the nation of Israel. Some say he was after the nation of Israel. So we're going to go into the scriptures um, and some studies and see when Job actually lived and uh, see where he fits at in uh, historical chronological sense when it comes to the Bible. All right, let's continue. Book of Job chapter one, verse five. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. All right, so Job offered a um, burnt offerings, right? He told, his, he, he, he told his sons to rise up early in the morning. He rose up early in himself, uh, himself, and he went and sanctified them, right? And he offered burnt offerings. Now, let's go to the law and prove that Job wasn't after the nation of Israel, all right, proving that he essentially wasn't an Israelite, not saying he wasn't of the chosen seed, but we're proving that he was after Israel to give a timeline right now. So let's go to the law and see what it says about a man offering for another man's sins. The book of Leviticus chapter four, verse one, and Ahiah, whom some say the Lord, spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, if a soul shall sin, through ignorance against any of the commandments of Ahiah concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto Ahiah for a sin offering. All right. So even when the priest had sinned, the sin had the, the priest had to do it for himself. Right. Um, you know, not, of course, bring it to the other priest, but. You know, a, a man had to do the, the offering himself, okay, or, or, or any type of, um, you know, uh, reconciliation for sins would be done for himself. He couldn't do it for another person like Job did, showing that Job was before the nation of Israel, right? Because the Levitical priest had to handle your, your, your sin offering, all right? So now let's go get a precept because this just might not be enough for some people. So let's get a precept. The book of Leviticus, chapter 1, verse 1. And Ahiah called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto Ahiah, he shall bring, excuse me, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntarily will voluntarily will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before Ahia. All right. It says he shall offer it on his own voluntary will. That man. All right. And it says in verse two, let me read verse two again. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, if any man of you bring an offering unto Ahia. Right. Did not Job bring an offering? All right. 
But it's, he wasn't bringing an offering for himself. It, he was doing that for his sons. Excuse me, for his sons. So uh, in chapter 1 of Leviticus, it says a man has to do it. Chapter 4 says even the priest has to make the offering himself, right? Of course, with the other priests. So it didn't say in any, any one of these chapters that a man can make an offering for another man, right? As Job did for his sons. Now, that shows that Job came after the nation of Israel. Now, let's go into the scriptures furthermore, but I want to go into what's called the patriarchal servant, all right? Abraham, he made sacrifices. He made offerings. He was what you'd call a patriarchal servant. He was one of the patriarchs. Noah, he made sacrifices. He uh, was one of the patriarchs. We get to Job. He was one of the patriarchs. He was before, this is before the Levitical covenant um, of the priesthood was there. So we still have people making offerings and sacrifices, right? All right, so that's what it is. It's just proving that Job is before the nation of Israel um, came into existence, at least out of Egypt, you understand? Now I want to take some time to address the little argument of where people say Job was an Edomite. All right, because there's a misinterpretation of scriptures and people are saying Job was an Edomite. So let's go ahead and examine that as well. The book of Genesis, chapter 36, verse 31. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. And Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Denhaba. And Bela died, and Jobab, the son of Zerah, of Bozrah, reigned in his stead. And Jobab died, and Hushma, and Hushma of the land of, of Tamani reigned in his stead. All right, so uh, Jobab died in Edom. He reigned in Edom and he died in Edom. They say that um, the doctrine is that I've heard that is they mixed Job up with um, this person here, jo Jobab, the king of Edom. And this person died in Edom. But in the Job chapter one, it said Job was a land, a man in the land of Uz. But this Jobab, he died in Edom, right? So that doctrine of uh, Jobab and Job are um, the same person is a, a twisted doctrine um, and, a, and a deceitful doctrine because they're obviously not the same person because this person, Jobab, he was a king in Edom and he died in Edom, all right? Job was a Uz. Now let's go to another precept that they, or they would call a precept, a scripture that they merge together to say Job or Jobab, which they say is mistaken for, was that man in Uz and he was an Edomite, right? This is Lamentations 4 and 21. Rejoice and be rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through un, unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. So it says the Edomites dwell there, all right? Their, their land pushed into the land of Uz when they started coming out of the caves. The book of Genesis, chapter 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. All right? But when you get to the 31st verse, all the way to 34, like we read, it gets to Jobab. So Jobab dwelt in Mount Seir. He was a king in Mount Seir. He died in Mount Seir, in Edom. That's where the Edomites dwelt. All right. So by the time of uh, Jeremiah writing the book of Lamentations, there were Edomites that dwelt in Mount Seir because they had pushed into the land. But that doesn't make Job an Edomite. He's still an Uzite. We already proved he can't be an Edomite or an Israelite because he's before the Levitical sacrifices uh, even started. All right, he's with the patriarchal sacrifices and offerings. So the last thing on that is I wanted to do a comparison on the names. All right, the name Jobab and the name Job. Let's do an etymology, etymology um, comparison when it comes to these names. So you have Job, which comes from Strong's 347, 
which in the Hebrew is Ayab, um, and it means hated, all right? That's what Job means. So when you go to um, Jobab, which is Yabab in the Hebrew, it says, a son of Joktan, also his descendants, also two non-Israelite kings, also two Benjamites, all right? Remember, one of those Israelite kings, or, or excuse me, one of those non-Israelite kings was that Edomite Jobab, right? So even their names are two, is two, has two different meanings, all right, and two different strong numbers. So Jobab and Job are not the same thing, and Job was not an Edomite. Now let's take a brief look at Job and let's take a look at the friends around Job. All right, let's investigate the friends around Job and see where they're from. Maybe that'll help us find out where Job is from. The book of Job chapter 2 verse 11. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came, every one from his own place. All right, so all of these men came from their own place. Why did they come from their own place? Because they was coming to Job's place in Uz, because Job's, what Job was in Uzai, right? It says Eliphaz, the Temanite, all right? Taman, that's the son of uh, Edom. So it lets us know Edom was on the scene. So that further lets us know that um, Job was after Abraham and before um, Israel and Edom because he didn't take the Levitical sacrifice. He did a... Um, patriarchal sacrifice he could sacrifice he, he he did sacrifices for his sons right um and you couldn't do that with the levitical sacrifice you had to do it yourself all right uh and take it to the priest so um he's before um the nation of israel and edom right but he's after abraham because he did patriarchal sacrifices instead of levitical right because we see Eliphaz the Temanite, which is an Edomite here, one of his friends that came to see him. Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the, the Naamathite, for they had made an appointment together to come down, to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. Alright, so these friends of Job they came to mourn and comfort with him, right? Or comfort him. And they says they all came from the, their own place. And they're coming from their own place once again because they're coming to Job's place there in Uz because he's a Uzite. But out of these three friends, let's look at the main uh, person that Job is dealing with, right? It's Elihu. This is Job chapter 32, verse 6. And Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young. And ye are very old, wherefore I was afraid, and durest not show my show you mine opinion. All right. So um, Elihu is a Buzite, right? So you have Uzites and you have Buzites. Let's see where the um, Buzites come from, and let's see where the Uzites come from. Because we see we have a Tamanite here, a um, Namathite here, right? And we see we have. Um, a Buzite here, but where's the Uzite? All right, there's no Uzite mentioned. And you even had Bildad the Shuite. All right, so it would seem like the Uzite is left out, but it really doesn't have to mention it because in the first chapter it tells you Job is a man in the land of Uz, right? And his friends come to see him in the land of Uz because he's an Uzite. But let's examine Elihu and what a Buzite and a Uzite is and where they come from. And let's see why um, Job and Elihu were so close. The book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 20. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham saying, Behold, Milcah, she have also borne children unto thy brother Nahar. Verse 21. Whose, which if you look in other translations or even in the Hebrew, it's, act it's actually ooze. Right. It says his firstborn and booze, his brother and Kimuel, the father of Aram. All right. So the brother of Abraham. Right. Like we keep saying, he uh, uh, Job's 
after Abraham, before Israel and um, Edom, right? The brother of Abraham, Nahar, he bore a son named Uz or Uz, and he has a, another son, Uz's brother, Booz. That's why Elihu's, uh, or excuse me, Elihu, um, in um, the book of Job, Job's friend, right? That's why he's so cl clicked up close with Job because he's a Boozite and Job is a Uzite. You understand? They both come. They're both sons of Nahar. In regards to the Uzite and the Boozite, right? So they they recognize that, and that's why um, Job is dwelling in the land of Uz, and he has a Boozite right next to him. So most definitely, Job is a son of Uz, which is a son of Nahar, which is Nahar is a brother of Abraham, right? Abraham got circumcised, or Abraham circumcised himself. So you telling me Abraham didn't go over and tell his brother to circumcise himself and his sons also? Yeah, come on now. Let's get a precept proving how Job can be a servant of um, the Most High, right? And not directly be, uh, you know, come from Israel, right? Because he's, remember, he's a, he's a patriarch. He's before. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 26. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. All right? So this, the, the, the Most High is the power of Shem. He is the God of Shem. So you have to come through Shem. You know, there's a righteous seed that comes through Shem, which all the way went to Eber, all the way to um, Abraham, right? So... It says, blessed be the Lord God of Shem. And that's what Job comes from. He's a Shemite. Being that he's an Uzite, which Uz is a son of Nahar. Nahar is just like Abraham. He's a brother of Abraham. And they come from Shem. Although they come from Eber all the way back to Shem. So they are servants of the Most High in their patriarchal uh, standpoint. That's why they could do offerings like that. Right, without having to have a Levitical priest there. So Job's not a white man. Uh, Job's not Jobab. Job is just a, one of the ancient ancient patriarchs and the servants of of uh, the Most High who endured, right, and a righteous man. That was sometime after Abraham and uh, sometime before the nation of Israel and Edom. And is he? A, and he's a descendant of the children of Uz. That's why he dwells in that land. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. All praise to Ahia and death to Babylon. Yeah.